The Wizard and the Bat Cat, a magical fantasy story about wizards. Horace Dripwood had been hiding in the hollow tree all day. He didn't want to be found by a hobgoblin called Toe Cruncher. Horace had borrowed money and the hobgoblin could get very nasty if he didn't get his money back. Very nasty indeed. The trouble was, making money in the forest was difficult. Most folks didn't have coins or cash. They swapped and bartered instead. Nobody seems to want the services of a scruffy wizard of middling years, whose hat sagged, his old robes were threadbare, and his pointy-toed slippers were more whole than shoe. Horace heard something moving in the tree above, and peered up nervously. Luckily, it wasn't toe cruncher as he feared. With the night drawing in, it looked like a large bat had come home to roost. The bat climbed down the inside of the hollow trunk. Horace could now see that it had a furry tail and paws. Clearly not a bat. The creature waved its tail about and nearly knocked Horace's hat off. Are you a bat or a flying cat? Horace asked. The bat just purred. Horace had a good feeling about this. Perhaps you might like to be my familiar, he said. The best I can offer is regular meals and a dry tree nest to sleep in. The cat purred, offering its back to be stroked. Despite the bat-like wings, it behaved like a normal cat. Maybe that means yes, Horace thought out loud. While still stroking the bat cat, Horace felt sorry for himself. He told the Bat Cat of his woes and sorrows. A lack of wizarding work, no sympathy from his friends. Horace felt the creature somehow understood. The Bat Cat jumped down from Horace's lap and started scratching around at the base of the hollow tree. At first, Horace thought it was going to do something nasty in the leaf litter. But when the corner of a small chest emerged, Horace became excited and began helping with the digging. In a few minutes, a small metal chest was revealed. The best thing was that it was unlocked and full of silver coins. With this treasure, he could pay off the hobgoblin easily. The next day, he did just that, with the bat cat sitting on his shoulder. No more debt for me, Horace thought. Then they went to the market together and bought plenty of food. Horace was delighted to have met the bat cat who turned his life completely around. And she seemed pretty pleased with the arrangement too. When they got back to his thatched tree nest, they feasted on hot savoury pies, a jug of cider, chocolate mice, and special witch-made cat treats for his new found friend and familiar. 